Hey friends, welcome to Nikra's Expert Learning. In today's video, we will see for the given rectangular stress components how to find the principal stresses and check for invariance. So we would be firstly solving the derivation part, and after that we'll solve an example in two methods. One would be the general method, and second is the standard method which we follow, like using the uh, formulae. And one would be the general method. I would be uh, explaining you the both methods. Okay, coming to the first one, we'll see the derivation first. Okay, this is the rectangular element, the component given. So for this, we we have to find the principal stresses and also check for the invariance. Okay, so this is the stress uh, distribution like uh, sigma x in x direction, sigma y, okay, sigma x in x direction, two in opposite directions, and sigma y in the vertical directions, okay, in the y direction. So tau y x, that is the component of this stress in the x direction. So x y, that is the component of this stress, normal stress. In the y direction, so these are the shear stresses developed because of this normal stresses. Okay, the tau y x is going to be the sigma y in x direction. Tau x y, that is the component of x in y direction. Okay, so this could be the diagram of that. So in this, whenever we are talking about the resultant stress, it's going to be sigma. Like over here, n x, n y, n z are the direction cosines. So depending upon the direction, this would be getting changed. So if we want in x direction, the resultant stress, it is nothing but the stress in n x. That is, in the these are the direction cosines. So whenever we see some stress acting in a region in an inclined plane, we see that sigma into cos theta, sigma into sine theta. Right? Whenever we are dividing that into components. So similarly, whenever we are calculating this resultant stress, we have to multiply this direct stress with the direction cosine. Okay. In x direction, n x; in y direction, n y; in z direction, n z. So we have to enter this equation as a. Okay, feel that as a. And from Cauchy's formula, t x is equal to sigma x n x, tau x y n y, tau x z n z. Remember, whenever we are talking about x, only that x term would be the normal stress. Okay, and the remaining one, if for n y n z, it's going to be the shear stress, because This is the normal stress in y direction, multiplied by n y. Okay, and this is going to be the normal stress in the z direction. So it's going to be shear stress. Okay, so whenever we are talking about this, see, this is the diagram I will be explaining you. This is going to be the normal stress sigma x in x direction. But there is also the other component that is going to be tau y x. That is y in x direction. Okay, and again in this direction there will be another plane that is tau x, z x, that is z in x direction. Okay, so whenever we are talking about t x, only the sigma x would be the normal stress. The remaining one would be the shear stress in x direction. Similarly, t y, for t y, sigma y would be this normal stress. Okay, sigma y n y, and again for n x and n y, you have to write the shear stresses. Yes. Similarly, for T X, T Z. Okay. So this is going to be from the Cauchy's formula. Okay. So whenever we are multiplying, let's see. Let let me just tell you. This is going to be the first equation. T X, T Y, T Z. And from Cauchy's formula, T X, T Y, T Z are these. Okay. As you can see, the L H S over here is same. T X, T Y, T Z. So we are equating this. Okay, so sigma x n x minus sigma n x. Okay, see over here. And tau x y n y plus tau x z n z. Next, tau x y n x plus sigma y. Sigma y is going to be sigma n y minus sigma y n y. Okay, that's going to be sigma y minus sigma. Okay, this is going to be the new equation. After subtracting those, okay. So sigma x minus sigma, sigma y minus sigma, sigma z minus sigma. So this for this, the trivial the trivial solution is n x is equal to n y is equal to n z is equal to zero. Okay, this is a trivial solution. But for us, if we don't want that to be a non like if we want that to be a non trivial solution, we have an equation. So for this to be non trivial solution, the determinants n x, n y, n z must be equal to zero. So in that equation we have seen everything except this diagonal elements. This elements are the shear stresses. 
and this is sigma x minus sigma sigma y minus sigma sigma z minus sigma so it's going to be this equation okay after expanding we would be getting this equation so if we just solve everything in this it's going to be this equation sigma cube minus sigma x plus sigma y plus sigma z plus sigma square so this is going to be that equation okay when we solve this you know how to get the determinant right i think there is already a video posted in my channel regarding how to find the determinant of 3 by 3 matrix please go check out that video in to to know this in detail and uh, this is going to be that equation okay after solving this will be the equation so in this if we say everything except the sigmas would be some determinants like you know some constant values sigma cube sigma cube and sigma x plus y plus z it's going to be i1 Determ see i is i1 is constant again and everything except the sigma it's going to be again another constant i2 and and again this here we don't have any coefficient over here it's going to be i3 so from this if we see i1 is going to be sigma x plus sigma y plus sigma z i2 is going to be sigma x sigma y sigma y sigma z sigma z sigma x and again tau xy square minus tau yz square and tau zx square see i'm also telling you how to remember whenever we are writing this equation first comes the quadrant like uh, 3 power power 3 sigma cube minus some value into sigma square it's going to be summation of all the normal stresses okay and again some value into sigma it's going to be sigma x into sigma y y into sig sigma y into sigma z sigma z into sigma x and again minus tau xy square minus tau yz square minus tau zx square okay and again we have some constant value right so it's going to be the multiplication of all these three and two twice two, tau xy tau yz tau zx minus sigma x multiplied by c if it is in x the remaining is yz okay if we consider in x so yz if x is the normal stress it's going to be tau yz and again see over here sigma y is considered so it's going to be tau x xz if we take sigma z it's going to be tau xy okay so similarly this is the equation okay this is a very important equation it will be asked in many exams so remember guys this i1 i2 i3 are called first second and third invariance of stress this derivation is very important in many exams i have seen in the question paper itself directly given so whenever they are asking for us to uh, like determine this stress invariance or also like derive the equations of the stress invariance this would be the answer okay now let us see for a given example how to know this stress invariance so i1 is nothing but sigma x plus y plus z i2 is nothing but xy yz zx minus tau of xy square tau yz square tau zx square okay and this is going to be the i2 the second invariant of stress and for i3 it's going to be the product of this firstly plus two times of tau xy yz zx minus if we are getting sigma x it's going to be yz square if we are getting sigma y it's going to be zx square if it is sigma z it's tau xy square okay these are the stress invariants very important question guys so in matrix form this would be the third invariant of stress like stress invariant okay now let us see some example in this so this is the example guys example one in two methods we are solving one would be the general method we follow like uh, i'll be showing how to do this everything and second would be the standard method by using some formula okay at a point p the rectangular stress components are so all these normal stresses and shear stresses are given and all in units of kilopascals okay find the principal stresses and check for invariance okay so in this whenever they are asking us to check for invariance we also should find the stress invariance okay first of all let us solve in the general method so whatever that's given write that as given data okay and we have to find the principal stresses and check for invariance first of all i will tell you the general method so this is the general method whenever we are writing this matrix first of all let me tell you how to write this matrix okay i will just explain you i will just give you in some format 
first of all writing this diagonal elements that are going to that is going to be the normal stresses sigma x sigma y and sigma z next comes in tau x y tau x z tau y x okay tau y z and tau z y so this is going to be the matrix rise whenever we are writing first of all write the diagonal elements and after that write tau x y x z similarly x y x z then it's going to be y z y z okay so this is the matrix form whenever they have given us this elements like the stress components start writing this matrix first okay and first of all we have to find the stress invariance i1 it's nothing but summation of the sigma x sigma y and sigma z write that okay sigma x sigma y sigma z it's going to be i1 the first stress invariant next i2 it it's going to be in this form just substitute the values from that matrix okay you'll be getting the value next i3 substitute all these values over here you'll be getting i3 value okay this is the first case like how to evaluate this stress invariance so till this step it would be common in general method and the standard method so in the next two ways next way we will be seeing that okay like what's the difference between those two methods so we know the function of stress is uh, written in this format right in the derivation we have seen sigma cube minus i1 of sigma square i2 of sigma minus i3 is of zero so in this substitute the values of i1 i2 and i3 we know that right okay and after this in calci we'll solve this equation i will show you how okay for your understanding i have also written the formula over here like how to do this uh, calculation steps everything i will just explain you in practical first of all this is the equation we have to solve guys click on mode okay this is the first step click on first of all turning on the calci click on mode and after that you have to click on phi okay click number 5 over here and after that you have to click on equation so when you click on phi that is equation and next click on 4 because as you can see 4 is the format it is a cubic equation so we are clicking the option number 4 click on number 4 okay you would be getting this matrix so in this you have to enter a b c d values so this is the equation you have to enter a b c d values so as you can see from this equation it's 1 minus 3 minus 20 and 43 entering the same over here entering 1 and after entering each term press this is equal to over here okay click that 1 minus 3 minus 20 and 40 again press is equal to and then it takes 5 seconds of time and after that you will be getting the values see minus 4.147 4.2 5.34 1.8 so all this whenever you are writing in this you know like equation you have to make sure in value terms sigma 1 is greater than sigma 2 is greater than sigma 3 not the symbols i am talking about okay this this these are the principal stresses so this is the very standard method we go for okay now let like uh, what we call is general method generally we do this formula but we also have some standard method wherein we use formulae okay this is the equation so we know how to get this f of sigma equation right till i1 it's same whenever we are finding stress invariance and getting this equation till that it's everything same in two methods and next we'll see the standard method so it's going to be in this format write the equation in this format y q plus p y square plus q y plus r is equals to 0 where the p q r are constants so for us to get this equation as 0 as i already told you we will uh, check that non trivial solution right for us to get the non trivial solution this is the formula y is equals to x minus 1 by 3 times of p first of all let me tell you what is p what is this we'll just solve everything in this equation so you know what is q you know what's p in this equation just substitute that over here you will be getting a value 
okay this uh, standard method is all about formulae just write everything in this one okay you are substituting this sigma with y and after that you are t- telling that p q r are the constants and then you have to use this formula over here x substitute y is equals to x minus 1 by 3 times of p okay in that a equation is this one and after that b is going to be 1 by 27 times of 2p cube minus 9p cube plus 27r again this is the formula substitute everything over here you know what's pq r over here you'll be getting the b value and next let us see what is cos phi again this is the formula guys so whenever we are talking about the standard method we have formula over here so okay so first of all we are writing the equation in one term and we are mentioning that a b c are the constants and here we are evaluating all those after getting the a value and b value we'll substitute that in this equation so that we can find what is the value of cos phi okay after evaluating everything you would be getting cos phi cos will go to this side to become cos inverse you'll be getting the value of phi okay now let us now find out what is sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 3 that is the principal stresses so in that case we were finding out in the normal way but here we have formula even for the standard method okay in this we have g formula is this one we know what say right find out g so the formula for the sigma 1 is going to be g cos phi by 3 minus p by 3 you know what's p g g is this one phi we have found out over here substitute everything you will be getting the first principal stress and substitute the other terms in the second equation this is the second principal stress okay you know everything just substitute you'll be getting sigma 2 so this is the equation for sigma 3 write down this formula guys because you know whenever they have asking for the standard method you have to write this formula okay and uh, after everything you'll be getting this so in this what we are doing is first of all we are writing the equation and in that we are finding out what is a and what is b and after that we'll substitute everything in the phi equation we will find out the angle and then we'll find out what is g and then we'll substitute everything in sigma 1 sigma 2 and sigma 3 So this is the basic procedure we follow in the standard method. Okay, write down the equation such that sigma one, sigma two, sigma three, like they are in the descending order. Okay, so this is going to be that equation, and in this, you know, sigma x, sigma y, sigma z. In this, the remaining terms will be zero. In the principal stress, whenever we are talking about that, we know that the shear stresses in that plane would be zero. Okay, only there will be the nominal stress, normal stresses. So enter that. and for that we are finding out i1 i2 and i3 values okay these agree with the earlier values whatever the early value earlier values we have got right uh, the one given in the question with that we have got i1 i2 and i3 values as all these three are matching with those three our equations are correct okay this is the second method that is the standard method we are following and as these three values are coinciding with that value we can say our equation is right Okay this is standard method which we solve using this formula okay that is it for this video guys we have discussed like rectangular stress components if given what we have to do like we have to find out the principal stresses and the stress invariants we have also discussed two methods in that one is a general method and second comes the standard method okay that is it for this video guys if you have any doubts regarding this let me know through the chat section and please do like share and comment this channel and don't forget to subscribe to my channel guys thank you for watching this video I appreciate you watching this video. Bye.